Welcome, you guys. I'm off here in the corner. By the way, Where are you? Kind of in the dark. Um, first of all, welcome back. Welcome home. It's good to have you here in Chicago. Um, what an epic show last night. Uh, three hours, 31 songs. Uh, how hard is it to come up with a set list that spans all of the, the different textures that incorporate the Smashing Pumpkins? Uh, I don't know. It was weird because I drew up the set list maybe months before we started rehearsing because we had to figure out what we were going to do for all the filmed visuals. And we never changed the set list, which is bizarre because that always happens. And, but I spent a lot of time trying to find a balance between kind of the songs people would want to hear and the songs that I think would tell our story because, you know, our stories, like, as fans know, is just as much about the deep cuts in the album as the singles. So. It was very comfortable to hear some of those old songs again. You could keep it, kept it focused on the first five records. Mm. And the visuals were amazing. How, who helped develop all of those? Um, well, my partner, uh, Linda Strawberry, um, who I've known literally since she was 17 years old. I met her when she was a, just a musical artist in uh, Salt Lake City. Um, she's been a family band friend for all these years, and so she's become a video director, producer. And so we hatched this idea to do this crazy show that would tell this narrative story um, because we felt if we were going to do a three-hour show, there was no way that you could just expect people to just sit there and watch us play. And having seen uh, stuff like Roger Waters' The Wall, I was really inspired by how the visual element can really add a, a level of emotion to the evening. And then when you get into the retrospective aspect, which is just playing songs from the first five albums, you can play with memory and time and space. So um, Linda shot a bunch of stuff. We worked with a really talented group of people, some visual artists that did some of the, uh, including my friend who lives here in Chicago, Caitlin Foise, uh, who did some of the animation stuff. But it was it was t totally like, we just winged all this stuff and put it up there and it kind of works. And, and it, it looked super impressive. The moving screens, the production, all of it. Even had the twins from the Siamese Dream. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, we had the, 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 the ladies from the Siamese yeah. Dream cover that came back. And I guess too. they're not really twins, are they? Well, it's funny because people always thought they were twins, which yeah. is, which is, I guess, one of those kind of mythological things, you know? Yeah, at one point they were conjoined twins, <laughs> <laughs> which, like, I don't see how you get that from the photo, but nonetheless. Yeah, I've, I've heard it all. Yeah. <laughs> so what was the impetus to put the original lineup back together again, to bring James back? Uh, James, you want to jump in on that? Hey. <laughs> <laughs> Um, there was no master plan as far as like uh, we're putting the band back together. I just uh, I reached out to Billy, and we had a nice dinner, and uh, you know just started from from that, and uh, more just about becoming friends again and um, just talking, basic it's, communication. <laughs> yeah, it's cool. It starts there where you. Reacquaint each other as friends before. Well, the that's music. how the band started. I mean, it was really built around our friendship and our love of music and this crazy idea that we had that we could do all these styles of music under one roof. Um, and so I think when we when we sort of were able to reconnect as friends, and you know, it it wasn't like you know we had one dinner and like, like let's get the band back together. It was just like we would get together when I was in L.A. and you know have family dinners and stuff like that and just you just you just realize that whatever was the issue is just is not an issue anymore right. and then music becomes a natural extension of how to best express your relationship because that's obviously the place we've connected the most so now that you are friends again and now playing music again how does it feel does it feel different than it has in the past 10 years without james now that everybody's back playing yeah. together again you know it's weird because i know from the outside and I know sometimes when I've looked at other bands and sort of what I think is happening as a fan looking at a band and then having had the experience and of course hearing from people what they think, it's strange, but I'm, I think if we could do it all over again, I think we would have done it different, but having turned out the way it's turned out, I mean, Jimmy's left and come back different times and obviously James not being in the band all those years, I think now that we're together again, the band is stronger than ever because the things that we learned without each other was really valuable and, and has a lot to do with where we are right now. But I think we have such a greater and deeper appreciation for one another and our friendship and our 
and our love as a family, we, like smashing pumpkins. I mean, I get teary thinking about it because it's like it's such a crazy journey. Yeah. Because and, and and you know here we are in Chicago, you know even playing last night at the United Center sold out show. It's like wow, this is crazy. You know, you know most of these songs that we play are you know they were written right here, and you know it's it's you know show business is a bit of smoke and mirrors as we like to say. You know it's a lot of putting on airs and stuff. But, you know, when I stand across from James and I look at Jimmy, I mean, you know, I see us in dingy rehearsal spaces when nobody cared about us. I see us dragging our equipment through snow. I see hipsters making fun of us in 1989 saying, what is it you guys are even trying to do? Right. So when you have that bond and that connection, and that never goes away. And so that's really what binds us. The, all the other stuff is really amazing, and, and I think, we're really appreciative um, that people are still interested, but the thing that really is deep is like, wow, we're still connected. That's crazy. Thirty years and counting. I mean, it just blows my mind. Well, I thought it was obvious last night to see you guys interact on stage. You could feel that bond, and I've seen you guys since you know my band, Stabbing Westward, played with you guys in '89 at the Avalon. You know, so I've seen you for decades. I saw you dragging your snuff through the snow. Right. Up those stairs in the back, you know. Yeah, the Avalon, the treacherous back stairs. The worst load in in the country. But nonetheless, I thought this band is the best I've ever heard it last night. Kudos to you. I'm so glad you're back. 